thank you, ladies and gentlemen, very, very kind. Now, how are you? All right? Good. All right? Good. Now, uh, then, let's see now. Let's see what we've got here tonight. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> now, now, the thing is this, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, you see, we want all you, you see, all the audience, to get together with all us lot and make out that we're having a marvellous time here tonight, you see, for those at home, the viewers watching. I'll tell you why. Because if you laugh, you see, laugh out loud, the viewers think it must be funny, so they start laughing at all. <laughs> God willing. Now, the only thing is, we don't force you to laugh. Oh, no, we don't, no, we don't force you to laugh at all. No, it's entirely up to you, you see. Oh, God. <laughs> No, anyway, try and listen, no. I tell you, listen, I tell you one thing, you're, you're lucky, because in the early days of television, you know, what they used to do, <laughs> they used to have attendants. They used to have a tennis girl walking through the... Listen, missus, now listen. Now, look, don't get common, girl. Look, don't get common, look. No, they used to have attendants at one time going through the audience with whips. <laughs> you had to stop that. We found too many people were starting to enjoy it. The thing is... <laughs> Oh, you know, I listen, no, I to try and be kind, because I've had a shocking week. I have had a shocking week. No, I'm at the end of my tether. Oh, I am. It's a terrible thing to be... No, it is Mrs. Don't tell her. <laughs> After I blame the... I blame, who I blame? This man who runs it here. What's the man who runs it here? The man who... Who's the head of the BBC? A tall man with a six protruding... What's his name now? Thing. You know, Thing. What's it... Big uh, yes. Him who sits in the BBC restaurant with five loaves and two fishes. Now, <laughs> I don't know what he's expecting to happen. Anyway, no, but he's, no, he's got this image, you see. No, he's got this image. He wants me to change my image, make me sophisticated. He wants me to be intellectual. Yes, me, sort. No, but he said, ah, no, ah, now I'm glad you asked. No, because no, there <laughs> dudes. Last week, he sent me out to give two lectures. Can you imagine? Two lectures, me! First of all, I went to Luton, to this pudding factory. <laughs> this pudding factory. <laughs> I had to give a talk to all the girls in the club there. <laughs> oh, I'd have known you to laugh, Mrs. No. And then, of course, there was this terrible fiasco at the Women's Institute. The Women's Institute. No, will you say, no, oh, I talked for now. There was pandemonium. Pandemonium! No, well, no. See, no. I, no, apparently, I got the wrong subject. I was talking about the wrong subject. I didn't know. Apparently, I was supposed to talk about lovemaking, you see. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Oh, so anyway, I got back to London. I thought to myself, now, first, I'll have a nice lay down, a nice quiet day, you know. Sit down, rest on the she's long. I'll have a night. Yeah. Would I? Now, listen. The, listen, the door, never mind, uh -huh. the doorbell <laughs> never stopped ringing from dawn till dusk. Ring! I thought I'd go mad. It's always the same, isn't it? First call was a gypsy. Gypsy, yes. With a, this bright coloured headscarf, you see, and the earrings, big earrings, and Wellington boots. I thought it was low. It'll be a pinch of violets, you see, or a packet of shoelaces. So, but before I could say anything, she said, Good morning, I'm your local Conservative candidate. <laughs> you could have knocked me down with a blue rose if I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, I don't take part. I said, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in... I don't take part in any organised political bodies, I said. I'm a liberal. I'm a liberal. <laughs> See, it's supposed to be witty. It's satire. <laughs> now, come on, pull yourself together. Liberal. Mrs. Liberal girl. You're liberal, aren't you? Yes, very liberal, yes. <laughs> we don't worry all about you. No, um, no, the thing is, and the sickles, I just sat down to lunch. Bang, bang, again. Gas man. Gas man. See? Out of breath, puffing and panting, I thought he was ill. <gasps> he said, good morning, he said. I'm from your local gas pod. <gasps> I said, good... I said, you're winded, aren't you? You're winded. He said, so would you be after doing 400 metres? <laughs> I could have smashed his face in. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, brethren. Looking at the... Now, listen. Looking at him, it took me back. Memories, memories of when I was a gas man. <laughs> 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 
you will pardon you. When I was a gas man, I used to work for the money. There's common as muck, that one there. Join her over here. No, no. I was, no, I was saying no, I used to be a gas... Shut up! Loosen something, loosen something. Poor soul. Poor nothing worse, your knickers out of focus. <laughs> I was a gas man, you know. Yes. Well, I, not for long. Before I went on the stage, I didn't do it long, cos, I mean, you know, you, know, you get bored reading metres. I mean, once you've read one, you've read them all. It's like... Doctor? Yes? There's a Mr Francis Howard outside. Last week he had a check-up at the hospital before he goes abroad, and now he wants to see you. What about? Well, I asked him what it was about, and he said he was reluctant to tell me. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, send him in, Miss Tompkins, please. This way, Mr. Howard. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, nurse. Uh, could I see the doctor, please? I am the doctor. Pardon? I am the doctor. <laughs> um, well, um, well, <laughs> yes, I would isn't there to be some mistake, I think, um, I wanted to see the gentleman doctor, the uh, uh, Dr. Pearson. I don't think you quite understand. Uh, I am Dr. Pearson's locum. Oh, are you? Ah, oh, well. <laughs> well, that's when your private life is no concern at all. Um, Dr. Dr. Howard, please don't waste my time. No. I'm a doctor. What is your problem? Oh, well, uh, it's very difficult to say, you see, you being of the womanly sex, a woman. Do you understand? Sit down. Sit down. Well, look, is, is Dr. Pearson here? I am a doctor. Yes. What is wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> well, I say nothing. I have a twinge, OK? I think we all do. You have a twinge, well, you yes. know. I mean, uh, I think it's the uh, lovely day. <laughs> It's the first day I've left off my string vest. You know that. Is there nothing wrong with you? Why have you come in here? Well... It's something to do with going abroad, isn't it? That's right, Well, yes. then, tell me. Well, you see, it's very difficult, you see, you being a woman. I mean, you are a woman, aren't you? Well, of course you of are. Of course You're... I'm a woman. I can see that, because, I mean, your jacket's buttoned different to mine, you see. <laughs> Truth, um, what is it you want? Well, actually, um, see, I have to go abroad and I yes. have to have these typhoid inoculations, you see. I, well, I could give you an injection. An injection, that's what I injection. want. Injection? I mean, yes, injections, yes. That's no problem at all. Oh, you can't. Well, I mean, you can. I'm sure you too, but I didn't... Um, can I, how can I put this? Could I be precise? I wish you would. Yes, how can I put it? You see, Dr. Pearson didn't used to put it in my arm. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. Well, that's very... Oh, I'm, I'm swaying. I'm, I'm, I'm coming over faint. I think I have to go and see a doctor. Sit down, sit down. We haven't got your report back from the hospital yet. You haven't, no. But just to assure you, I'll give you a quick examination. Oh, no, you can't. No, you can't. I mean, you never know what you might find, do you? I've got a pretty good idea. Oh. Uh, Keep it to yourself, won't you? I mean, you've got... No, no, please, rather, rather not. You see, you being of the p female persuasion. What difference does that make? Oh, it makes a lot of difference. It does? Well, certainly, I mean, you might uh, lose control. You know, lose uh, control? Well, I mean, shit. You might be overcome with passion for my body, I mean. <laughs> It would be understandable, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, then what would you do with a stethoscope? Then oh, what would you do? It's all dangling, you see. I mean, I'd, I'd rather see. You know, I'd feel safer with a man. After all, he, he does know where everything goes, you see. <laughs> Sure, you so do I. Then you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> In my young day, a woman knew never knew what a man had got until she was married. And not even then if she could move quick enough. <laughs> I'm absolutely tired of all this nonsense. Well, Come along now, open your shirt. Yeah, but, but please, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, please. I have a weakest chest. Now, please, don't go mad. Now, don't thrust those long fingers. Fingernails into my pink flesh. Now come now, along. Now, oh, oh, please! <laughs> you might have breathed on it first. Uh, 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 wait, nice oh, thing. Oh, 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 there, I beg of you. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was so ticklish. I feel such a fool. I'm so ticklish. 
Do you know, every time I measure for a pair of trousers... I'm a, no, I'm on tranquilizers for a full <laughs> You know, I have never heard anybody make such a fuss oh, in I my see. life. Oh. Now, come along. What? Sit down here. Here? There. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to test your reflexes. I see. Now. God, blimey. <laughs> now, give a swipe, don't you? Have you ever thought of going into the demolition trade? <laughs> Put your tongue out. You're not going to hit that as well, are you? Oh, don't be so ridiculous. Put your tongue out. Oh. Say, ah, 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 Put it away again. <laughs> That's what I thought. You're perfectly fit. Thank you very much. Well, I'll be going then. I'll be off now. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Howard, I want your trousers off. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I want you to take your trousers off. Have you no shame, woman? <laughs> if you're so ridiculously shy, you there behind the screen. The screen? Ah, oh, no. There might be someone staying through the window. I mean, I know I would be if I was out there. Oh, no. We're three stories up. Ah, yes, but there are crane drivers, aren't there? Let's Hurry up, I've got other patients all to right, see to. Right. Hello? Oh. Oh, Miss Tompkins. It's about Mrs. Johnson, Doctor, the lady with the plaster oh, cast on yes. her broken leg, right? Uh -huh. um, the reports and, and x-rays of the leg are here. I think you should see them right away. Apparently, it's about time the plaster came off. Oh, right. Oh, well, will you bring the reports in, Miss Tompkins? Right away. Thank you. Mr. Howard? Yes? Have you got those trousers off yet? <laughs> well, I've got something caught in the zip. I shan't be <laughs> Reports on the patient, Doctor. Ah, thank you. Oh, I say. Oh, the situation's worse than I thought. If we're not very careful, we're going to end up with it a couple of inches too short. <laughs> that will leave the patient with a limp. <laughs> now, of course, all that lot's in the way. I recommend that it must come off immediately. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Howard, come along. Let's get rid of you as quickly as possible. Oh, no, thank you, no, thank you. I'm too young to die. But no, Mr. no. Mr. Howard. Oh, I'm sorry. I demand to see my lawyer. I'm Dr. sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. There's shock news from the hospital. What is it? What is it? They say it's unique. They've never seen anything like it. What? Doctor, your patient is five months pregnant. <laughs> Only 11 jury members? But where is he? This really is most irregular. We cannot start this case with only 11 jury members. Where is he? I have no idea, my lord. He was given very clear instructions as to the time and place. I can only assume he's been detained somewhere. In all my years as a judge, I've never experienced such a disgraceful state of affairs. Well, we obviously cannot start this case without a full jury. As your lord, you please it. I must say I quite agree. It is almost irregular. It most certainly is, Mr. Tuppen. Uh, upon my soul. Uh, well, well, excuse me. <laughs> Will the uh, clerk to the court kindly make inquiries and make certain that this missing juror knows how he has delayed my court this morning? Yes, my lord. Uh, excuse me. There's silence in court. Yes. Yes. Silence in court, please. We're trying to converse. Uh, so what are you doing here? Uh, yeah, well, I was invited. Did you see? I'm sorry to be so tardy. You know, it's these complicated road signs. You know, no entry, keep straight ahead. Don't go down the left ray, right leg. It must be shocking if you've got a motor car, you know. <laughs> anyway, the thing, is, the thing is, I've got here. That's the main thing, isn't it? Yes, I'm sure it is. I've your kind, let me see, Tim. Yes, thank you so much. There we are. Now, <laughs> don't, you have a good, don't you have a good view from up here in the gods? <laughs> no wonder they call you my lord. My lord! <laughs> You can't sit there. There's a special seat for you down there. Yes, there. Oh, thank you. Thank you, madam. Madam? <laughs> yes, I'm um, yes, here. Do you know, in that week, you look like my auntie Sissy. You do. <laughs> May I ask you something? Why are you so so conscious about being bald? I am not bald. Oh, my auntie Sissy is. Oh, uh, what a no, shame. Will you kindly oh, take your seat? It's all right. Don't get your underwear in an uproar. All right. <laughs> thank you. Nice to have met you. Thank you so much. There we are. Right, I'll just say best. Make myself comfy. <laughs> why the kittens? Why the yeah. court? Uh, may I ask why you were wearing a dress? Dress? <laughs> this is my dramatic apparel. You see, no. Ah, well, no. See, we were at Madame uh, Clarence Drama School. Drama School, Madame Clarence, doing Romeo and Juliet. Now, 
I'm, I'm Romeo, she was Juliet. Now, I was halfway up her balcony, and you see, <laughs> right, you see, and she was leaning over, see? And I suddenly thought to myself, oh, the scales of justice. The scales of justice? Yes, because one is lower than the other, you see. <laughs> Yes. Here, I'm sorry. I've run here as quick as I could. Mind you, I had to with this lot on. <laughs> I haven't missed much, I hope, have uh, I? No, you'll miss nothing now if you'll kindly take your place. Yes, thank you. Nice to met you. Thank you so much. There we are. There we are. There you can't sit here either. Well, I can't stand here either. I mean, these, these types are chafing me under the armpits. <laughs> no, it's really... Well, this way, sir. Oh, I Your see. seat is here. Oh, I see. In the stalls. Thank you very much. Hello. What's the matter, Bill? Jealous? <laughs> May we at last proceed with this case? Very good, my lord. Bring in the accused, Edward White. Edward White. Here's a book in your right hand. Repeat after me. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth, have the God. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Yeah, sure, chop, chop. I should think so indeed. This is outrageous. Never mind chalky. Chin up chalky. Keep chirpy chalky. Do you know this man? No chalky. Of course I know Chalky. We were in the raft together, weren't we, Chalky? Yes, good lad, Chalky. Get anything you want. You know, cup final tickets or anything. Yeah. Do you know we had three Spitfires on our uh, station? And it was only a laundry unit. <laughs> You'll be silent and sit down. Oh, I'm so sorry. Am I embossing you? I'm so sorry. Do. Oh, Lord, I must object to the antics of this theatrical buffoon. Theatrical buffoon? I look mush. <laughs> I didn't borrow my costume from Margaret Lockwood, I'll tell you that. Stop. <laughs> I hired this costume from a two years. Do you realize that Laurence Olivier's legs have probably been inside this? I'm damn sure they have. <laughs> <laughs> what? This gentleman has arrived for jury service. Uh, jury service? Uh, but we've got a full jury. Well, I've examined his papers, my lad, and he has indeed done the jury service in this court. Ah. Uh, yeah, well, no, I don't go there. Don't walk. I've worn that seat up. Good day, spitter out, me. Uh, will one. you kindly remove this man? Yes, go on. Get out of it. Go on. Uh, now, just a minute. What? Just are you down for jury service in this court? Who, me? Yes, you. No, why? Someone say I was, then? Uh, get rid of this man. Come along. No, I can't just sit. Come along. I have been caught. Now, may we at last proceed with this case? Thank you, my lord. The first witness I intend to call is, in fact, a surprise witness. I was not aware of his existence until a phone call today informed me that he had vital evidence. Oh, uh, it's going to be one of those days today. <clears throat> Very well, Mr. Tuppen. What is your witness's name? Hey, Mr. Francis Howard, my lord. Call Mr. Francis Howard. Call Mr. Francis Howard. Call Mr. Francis Howard. You call? <laughs> This man. Wait, 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 get out. You've let of my tights now. Get out of here. I'm calling Mr. Francis Howard. And I am answering Mr. Francis Howard. Look, I can't keep making these encores, you know. I am. Fra wait. <laughs> Francis Howard. Uh, you are? Yes, and would you mind calling off Dixon of Doc Green? Are you the gentleman who rang me this morning? Yes, I am. Saying you had important evidence on this case. That is correct. I have vital evidence which will completely clear the accused of thus. Clear? Yes. I am here to convict him. Oh, don't be wicked. You would not be joking. Oh. If your evidence will help the accused, why did you not contact defense counsel? Because I only know two people connected with the law. Two names. Yours and Crippen. <laughs> I obviously chose the wrong one. Any more of this and I shall clear the court. Yes. Okay, can we please continue? Of course, I thought you'd never ask. Yes. Now, gentlemen and ladies of the jury, I throw myself on your mercy. I want you to look very carefully at the person who is up before us today. Note the shifty eyes, the cunning mouth, the weak chin. Is this the face of a criminal? Of course it is. But the judge is not on trial. <laughs> Edward White, Edward White here, who's on trial. Edward White, veteran of no fixed abode. Edward White, 
hold with the Queen's award for apathy. <laughs> oh, I'll wait for it. Edward White, willing to give his support to anyone who'd like to wear it. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the quality of mercy is not strained. He droppeth as a gentle rain from heaven. <laughs> Alas! Poor Chalky, I knew him well. Oh, don't worry, old son. We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when. <laughs> All together now. But I know we'll meet again. Tom Sully Hey, hey! Here's the court. We'll adjourn. Adjourn? Uh, we'll restart this case next week. Restart the case? My goodness, you mean we've wasted all this time? This is scandalous. Wasting all we taxpayers' money. This is outrageous. Oh, and it ceases Weather, I'm just the same. Yeah. <laughs> have those girls gone? I know where your girls are gone. Oh. I've sent them off on a proficiency test. <laughs> a proficiency test, you see, to find my scalp. Oh, what for? Because they're lost. They're lost. Oh. oh, gosh. How difficult. It was very difficult to lose them, I can tell you. <laughs> Took me hours, but I managed it in the long run. You see, I gave them a map of the Orkneys and I headed them south. <laughs> now, why? You're asking why, aren't you? Because I wanted to have a quiet pow wow with you, Brown Owl. Oh. Oh, Brown Owl. <laughs> May I call you Brown? Well, yes, all right. Good. Won't you sit down, Brown? Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, isn't it cold? A shiver went right up to me woggle. <laughs> no, I, I think I've got, a, I've got a kink in me khaki kicks. <laughs> That's better. Now, excuse me. <laughs> Brown? Yes? Do you remember the first day we met? Oh, yes, I do, actually. A horrid little boy. I wasn't. You were. You were scrumping for apples in our orchard. I know. And you said you'd tell on me unless I paid a forfeit, didn't you? Yes, I remember, and you refused. Yes, well, I mean, it was impossible to do that with a Cox's orange pippin. It was impossible. <laughs> no, no, but I've changed. I've grown up, I've altered. Oh, yes, Brown. Oh, Brown, I... How I've hungered with love for you. Oh, Skipper, this is so sudden. Many a time, I've watched you... I watched you over the old campfire, you and your girls. Gently warbling Eskimo Nell. Do you remember that? <laughs> I've watched you at dawn. Oh, you have? I have at dawn, yes. Skipping across the meadow, your billy's clanking. <laughs> Every step. Oh, Skipper. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, brown, brown, yes. Yes, I'll tell you something else. I've watched you at the porridge pot. Oh, no. I have. <laughs> I've watched you dolloping. Oh, I have. <laughs> and I've marveled at the size of your portions. <laughs> oh, you're such a generous girl. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if I. Yes, I will. Oh, Brown, could we go steady? Could we share whistles? Oh, oh Skipper, I've waited so long. Ah. Won't Daddy be pleased? Yeah, Daddy. Daddy, yes. I was coming to Daddy, yes. Um, your Daddy is a very fair, kind man, isn't he, your Daddy? I mean, I mean, he's one of the fairest and kindest magistrates the, uh, <laughs> the bench has ever had. I mean, some people say Daddy's hard and vicious, but he's not, is he? Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, look, um... Brown, suppose a chap, I mean, is on first offenders? Oh, yes. Suppose a chap, I mean, let's suppose, say, a scoutmaster. 
you see, was to be up in front of your daddy, um, say Tuesday, say 10.45, number three court, say. <laughs> say a scoutmaster who is madly in love with daddy's daughter. Skipper, what have you done? Oh, I've lost all the proceeds. What of? The Bobber Job Week. <laughs> a crime. This is the way I lost it. Oh, Brown. Oh, Skipper, you can confide in me. After all, we're more than just chums that's now. That's right, that's right. Yes, you see, it was for love of our four-legged friends. Oh, well, Daddy loves horses. Thank God for that, dear. You see, no, well, they told me this one was a stone cert. They said this is a stone cert. Nap, the papers said. They didn't say the damn thing was going to have one in the middle of the race. <laughs> I stuffed the lot on its nose. Still running. Perhaps I should have stuffed it somewhere else. <laughs> well, 117 pounds. Oh, Skipper, you gambled away 117 pounds well, of I... scout funds. Oh, Skipper. No, it wasn't gambling. It was to invest it, you see, for the future to accrue. I did it for my poor lads, you see, because we could have made 40,000 pounds. Do you understand? That would have provided us, provided us for our summer camp. Oh, Skipper, you don't need 40,000 pounds for a summer camp. You're doing Las Vegas. I tell you, because... <laughs> no, you see, I tried to explain this to the police. I said, these poor mites, I said, these poor mites, they need their minds broadening. They didn't understand. Try and make your daddy magistrate understand, won't you? Well... Oh, no, Brown, think. How can we start life together? Really? I mean, with this dark cloud hanging over us in, in the midst of our passionate love. Oh? I will talk to Daddy. Well, 1045, uh, number three court. You will talk to him? I Thank will. Thank you very much. Don't, don't forget number three court. Thank you. I'll talk to him tonight. Thank you. When we discuss the wedding plans. Wedding plans? I shall have a pink posy. Pardon? I shall have a pink posy. Well, you will go sitting on damp logs. I keep telling you. Don't you? No. For the wedding. The wedding. Next month. Well, you said that, well, wait, next month. Well, we've, uh, see, we, we mustn't enter, we mustn't enter into this lightly, because you're still oh, married. Oh, Skipper, I'm not entering into it lightly. You are. I've been planning this for years. You have? Oh, Skipper, oh, what? just think, when we two are one, yes? we'll be able to be together like this every night. Every night? Oh, Skipper! <laughs> Wait a minute, go. Skipper, what? really, what are you doing? Pleading guilty, number three court. Tuesday morning. All right! Get up and walk in. Get up and walk in. Take your turn at the queue. What's he talking about? Do you know? Um, uh, I say, excuse me. I thought I told you to get into the queue. I'd love to. Where is it, the odium? <laughs> ah, there you are. This position's closed. Oh, I see. Closed. You'll have to find another. Where? Down there. Down here, all right. To here is to be your master. Master, I <laughs> see. Isn't that typical? Placed behind a desk, they think they're God Almighty. <laughs> chop, chop. Right. What do you want? Well, what do I want? I think... <laughs> Have I seen you before somewhere? <laughs> yeah, weren't you down there a minute ago? Oh, that's correct. Yes. Well, what, what are you sitting down here for? No, it's my lunch break. It's your lunch break. All right. What are you doing down here, then? I'm for Mr. Parfit. Mr. Parfit. It's his lunch break. It's his lunch break. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. It might, it might be me. It might be me. <laughs> I'm going through a tricky time of life at the moment, you know. Come on, I must try and gather me wits. Ooh. Mm. Now, let us recommence. Uh, I presume you'd like employment. You presume correctly, yes. Oh. What kind? Uh, preferably the kind that doesn't entail work. <laughs> <laughs> a little joke, a whimsy, a whimsy, you understand a joke? Uh, <laughs> what is your profession? What is my profession? I am an entertainer, a weaver of dreams, a purveyor of humour. I see, and skilled. <laughs> Killed? How dare you? I've played every major city in the United Kingdom and the Isle of Wight. I'll tell you that. Oh, have you? <laughs> yes, well, let's have a look. Um... <laughs> uh, I have a vacancy. 
vacancy, pardon, a vacancy oh. for a labourer on a building site. Labourer on a building site? <laughs> Here. What's right? wrong with it? Look, take a, uh, take a peer. Take a peer. Peer at my hand. Take a quick peer. Well, well, well. Take a quick peer at my hand. <laughs> yes. Musicians' hands. Delicate. You oh, understand? are they? Yes. Now, look. A labourer on a building site. How could I attempt? Beethoven's ninth with a fistful of blisters. I, mean, I doubt if I, if I could even reach his eighth. <laughs> yes, you're, you're a musician, are you? Yes, I am a musician. The Philharmonic. Oh, the London Philharmonic. Kneesden. Kneesden? <laughs> we meet every Wednesday behind the swimming bath. Yeah. Uh, swimming bath? Yes. You, it, oh, God. You should see Nelly with her symbols. <laughs> yeah. no, they are enormous, they are. <laughs> and the symbols are big as well. It's only a joke again. I'm trying to alleviate the atmosphere. Yes, well, we have a vacancy for a filing clerk. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't do metal work. <laughs> a filing clerk works in an office. Oh, I'm sorry, I cannot work in a confined space. I get hydrophobia. Sorry? Hydrophobia is a dog's disease. Well, precisely. <laughs> That's why dogs never work in offices. <laughs> We're not having much luck, are we? No, we're not, are we? Uh, look, you'll, you'll have to fill in this form. Oh, I knew it. Form, form, form. Yeah, well, I'll uh, take it over there. Oh, I'll fill it in Don't get brusque. Don't get brusque. All right, all right. Uh, here. I'll tell you one thing. The next time I run across him, I'll make sure I've got the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You clumsy idiot. Don't be right bumping into me like that. Look, I'm it's sorry. It's disgraceful. You might have caused a nasty accident. Look, I'm just a part of I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Carelessness. All right, I'm sorry. I say, mush. <laughs> Are you addressing me? <laughs> Do you observe any other mushes round here? Then? <laughs> Lend us your pen, please. I'm in a hurry. Yeah, never mind. Look, it won't take long. Lend us your pen. How long? Oh, about six or seven inches. You must have seen a pen before. <laughs> Please be quick. All right, I'll do my best. Thank you so much. Most kind, most grateful to you. There we are. Howard, H-O-W-E-R-D. <laughs> now, on the slag heap, are you? I beg your pardon. I say, are you redundant? You've been given the elbow, have you? How dare you? Yeah, what did you do for a living? Bowl a hat, you got a dinner suit? This is not a dinner suit. Aye, well, someone's dinner right on the front of it. Look at all that. May I have my pen back? Yes, in a second. I really must all insist. All right, all right. Listen here. I'll tell you something. When you get to the counter, the counter, you see, you're going to a counter now. Now, whatever they offer you, whatever employment, turn it down, you see. Then they have to give you the dole. You have to get the, yes, the love of the dole, you understand? <laughs> Mind you, you must think of a reason. Tell them there's something wrong with you, like, you see. For instance, I should think in your case, what? Mental instability, lovely. <laughs> Will you please all right, hurry? All right, all right. Damn nibs wrong here. Look, look at that. You stupid fool! You're oh. ruined my pen! Oh, so look at it, you ruined it. It's I'm useless. Think... He's ruined my pen! I'm so sorry, really. All that fuss about a curly nib, it's unnecessary. Never mind. <laughs> there we are. Ah, yes, there it is. Now, have you filled it in? No, I haven't. It, the questions are ludicrous. You have to help me. Oh, all right. Uh, sex. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Will you please concentrate? I am concentrating, aren't I? Yes. There must be at least one job you'd like to do. Well, there is. Yes, I might uh, consider a prime minister's job. We already have one. But that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> oh, satire! For the last time, will you cooperate? I am trying to cooperate, and you are browbeating me, and I want to see the manager. Well, you're not seeing the manager. I want to see the, the manager. manager. Very busy. Manager! Oh, Mr. Thompson, sir, Where? I'm having trouble with this customer. Will you please deal with him? Oh. I shall be delighted. <laughs> oh, your majesty. <laughs> How is Mrs. Majesty? Listen, listen, no, I've had a terrible week. I honestly know. I've had a shocking week, because, I mean, you don't come in to hear my troubles, I know that. But I've had no, uh, my, rushing them forward, you see. I was supposed to say, uh, Monday. Last Monday, I took up the North. The North. No. Ah, now I'm glad you asked, because no. <laughs> no, no, fair dues. No fair dues. See, my agent, uh, he had this idea. He said to me, why don't you go to Hull? So, <laughs> I think he said Hull. Anyway, there was a strange man, most peculiar man, most peculiar. He said, no, he is. 
What's he doing to her? <laughs> Try cosplay on me, love. Leave him alone. <laughs> or you leave her alone. Anyway, before I say no, I've no, I've had a terrible week because you see, um, uh, Hull, because my agent, a very peculiar man, you know, he's got a dual personality, they call it, dual personality. They're, people hate both, both of them, I tell you. No, he's a peculiar man. I tell you why. You see, he, want, he said, it, well, this is the point. They suggested I go up at the north and open this new civic centre, you see, civic centre. And I thought it was the least I could do, because I helped to close two of their theatres. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're coming thick and fast now. Come along, come along, don't doze off. Anyway, the thing was, I had a wonderful reception up there, oh, marvellous reception. I don't know, I went from the station, I had a police motorcycle escort, an escort, police motorcycle escort from the station. Very flattering, mind you. I must say, I felt a bit of a fool running along between four motorcycles. You, can, you know, it, you know it, it takes the edge off it, but they apologised because apparently, no, they were going to send a rose, you see, from the town hall, but uh, you see, evidently on Wednesdays, it's out on refuse collection. So <laughs> I didn't know, but the, 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 the mayor was there, the mayor, he came there to greet me, the mayor, to greet me. Nice man, nice man, nice sir. As me aged, though. <laughs> Guess he got very, really, you know, he's past it, I think. Because, <laughs> Well, no, I mean, the old grey Mary ain't what he used to be. <laughs> no, no, and his value, his sense of humour hasn't improved either. No. When I, <laughs> every time I pulled his chain, he flushed. <laughs> now, are you enjoying yourselves? All enjoying yourselves? Yeah. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I thought so. Yes, I wish I... Look at those people there. Now, I, I, half the people haven't come here to see me at all, you know, because it's just dark there, that's why. Especially the people in the back row. Do you, do you mind, please? Look at that. Oi, hey, wait till you get home, please, for goodness sake. <laughs> Restrain yourself. What do you think this is? First tango in Shepherd's Bush. Good boy. <laughs> no, there's... What's... No, I don't believe there's a woman. I can see a woman stretched... Someone stretched out there in the back row. Someone... I beg, I'm sorry, it's not. No, it's someone's laid a coat over two seats. I beg your pardon. <laughs> it's a prone coat, a prone coat. <laughs> no, it's all right, as long as there's no one in it. Now, look. Uh, would you listen? Now we come to a most interesting segment of the entertainment. Uh, 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 Shut up. Uh, would you? Uh, That's right. Now this is my instrument. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if you could guess what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> now I don't want any answers. I shall tell you. I shall show you. I'm going to blow it. <laughs> now tell me, what does that mean to you? Nothing, does it? No. But let me tell you this, that in five minutes' time, this studio is going to be full of Vikings. The studio. Vikings. No. Let's know. Ah, what do you see? You know. Look at her looking there expectant now. She's bucked up. She's bucked up now, haven't you, Gail? Oh, look at her. Even the, even the coat of the back set up, I say. No. You see, in olden days, thousands of years ago, these Viking, the Vikings used to come here, you see, in their longboats. All oh, the Vikings came here, you see, in their longboats. And uh, they used to pillage and plunder. Oh, anybody here have been pillaged or plundered? <laughs> anybody here been pillaged or plundered? This is? You've been pillaged, girl, plundered? He doesn't know, doesn't know what it means. <laughs> you would have done it if you'd been here when the Vikings were here, I'll tell you that. No, you see, history has it. The Vikings used to come here and there are thousands. History has it. And carry women off into the night, screaming. See? And, um, that's history has it. I don't know. I what? Are you kidding? They loved it, the women. They loved it because there was no women's lib in those days, you know. No, no women's lib, of course not, you see. They, they wanted to be carried, whatever they were carried into the night for. They wanted, you know, domination. That's what they wanted, domination. Because they had no, they didn't, burn their, they didn't burn their bras in those days, you know. Well, for a start, the Vikings had them off. <laughs> before they could get the matches out the box. Anyway. <laughs> no, you see, the thing is this. The Vikings were very tough and they were very handsome, of course. And these Norse, they came from Norway, Norsemen, they were Norsemen. Norse, and um, they used to have uh, a contest every year for the most handsome and the most uh, brave, you see. It was called the Norse of the Year Show. <laughs> <laughs> the Norse of the Year Show? Oh, shut your face again. <laughs> well, it's worth a groan, at any rate. The thing is, no, but mind you, in those days, of course, you see, the Saxon women who lived then, they were very fragile. 
fragile, frail. No, not like her there. <laughs> Mrs. Now, listen, Mrs. Suppose you're at the turn. Yeah, Mrs. Look. Suppose dear, you're out in the in the backyard, getting your washing up. You see. And a Viking longboat. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'll just speak for herself. And a Viking longboat was to come sailing right up your goldfish pond. <laughs> and this man, big, big man, was to go slashing everywhere with his broadsword. <laughs> what would you do, girl? Eh? I know what you'd do. You'd overwhelm him, wouldn't you? You'd overwhelm His worm would never be so over, but then... The next item on the agenda is war. W-A-R. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I say war, of course I mean the 1940 war, the big lot. And you're saying to yourselves, it's understandable, you're saying, what? You say, why does he keep on about that? Why does he keep on about war? I'll tell you why I do, because everybody else does. There's films, there's, there's films, isn't there? I mean, and look at all the, the war memoirs being written. Load of rubbish. They are, but I mean, you know, things like, uh, Air Vice Marshal reveals all. <laughs> I was Rommel's aide de camp. I mean, who cares? I mean, who's better off at knowing that Rommel had a bit on the side named Ada? <laughs> and she was camp. Does it matter? Does it matter? Of course not. Mind you, I suppose I should mock, really, because I mean, everyone did their bit during the war. In fact, some, some people did several bits, to my knowledge. <laughs> See, I always say the British are at their. At their best, with their backs to the wall. The, um. <laughs> Mrs. I wasn't being personal, though, don't. No, no. But, uh, let you see the war. The thing is this, because I did, I answered the call myself. I, oh, yes, I was in Michael's, you see, I come from a military background. Military background? Oh, yes. Oh, a lot of heroes in our family. Four heroes. Oh, yes. I mean, no, no. The first, no, no, no. No, you're cheer. You're mocking. You're mocking Francis. Mocking Francis. No, no. Um, a lot of uh, legendary uh, war heroes um, of the military. There was, first of all, there was Tiger Howard, was the first. Tiger Howard, yes. Now, do you know Tiger Howard? Once drunk three bottles of uh, scotch and wiped out a machine gun post single handed. Yes? Oh, we were very proud of Mother. And then... <laughs> and I'd followed in the family tradition, you know, I was during the war, I called myself Mad Howard. Mad Howard. The trouble was, everyone thought it was short for Madge. I mean, it spoiled it, really. <laughs> but all my war exploits, all oh, your experiences, oh, yes, that exciting incident on one of the French landings. A father came out and built in me. <laughs> And then, are you, and then, are you bored? You bored? You all right? No, no. Oh, well, I think you do get bored, you know, with all these war things, don't you? Because all the BBC have been doing it all. The BBC, all this business, called it story. Called it story, you see. And that was a load of escapism. Escapism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't doze off. It's not bad. <laughs> Bits of this aren't bad. No, escapism. The cold did story, because, uh, you see, it makes me laugh because you read about these cleverly organised escapes. They were a load of nonsense. They dug so many tun tunnels, the whole place collapsed twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, have you really all enjoyed it, all right? Enjoyed yourselves? Yeah. Oh, any complaints? Uh, you have, missus? <laughs> well, you go and see a doctor, girl. Don't come here, right? <laughs> well, thank you very much. God bless you. Bye bye now. Thank you.